On February 1st, a blindfolded run of Elatrion, one of the hardest bosses in Monster Hunter World, would be uploaded by Queen Ponzalot. A runner named Juzi would watch this run and noticed multiple problems, so he uploaded a video going over the discrepancies and concluded her blindfolded run was fake. A lot has happened since then, and today we'll be analyzing if this run is legit or not, so let's start with an overview of the boss. Elatrion was the second to last monster released for the game and was designed to be a very difficult encounter with several mechanics. Throughout the fight, he will cycle through the fire, ice, and dragon elements, but he will always start the fight in ice or fire depending on what time you start the quest at. Each element has its own set of weaknesses and this is important for one big reason, his one-hit KO attack, the Echaton Judgment. When Elatrion changes from his second element to the third, he casts Echaton Judgment which kills you almost instantly. You can reduce its damage by dealing enough elemental damage to him to trigger a topple, which makes the attack survivable and allows you to fight for more than one cycle. After the judgment, he switches into his next element, so if you started with fire equipped because he started ice, he'll now be in fire form, which means he's no longer weak to the element you have equipped. This should ensure that you only have two cycles to defeat him, as you won't be able to topple after the first Eschaton Judgment since he's now the same type as your damage. But there's another mechanic that locks him into his starting element, and that's the horn break. By targeting his head when he's in dragon form, you can break off one of his horns. When this happens, he will revert to his previous element on the next elemental shift. But since he only has two horns, you can only do this twice, meaning you have a time limit before he will do a full power Eschaton Judgment and kill your attempt. Those are just the macro mechanics of the fight. Elatrion has a slew of physical attacks he will do, as well as elemental attacks, that vary from AoE to single target spells with their own audio and visual cues. Which brings us to the blindfolded run itself. She performs five attempts in total, and on the first three, she has another player in her party acting as a spotter by calling out specific things in Discord and using a noisy weapon to help her locate the boss better. The opening strategy is used in speedruns, where you clutch claw onto the dragon's head and have it crash into a wall. This gets him enraged, which lets you deal more damage, but at the cost of a slightly more difficult fight. This has a consistent setup, so nothing suspicious has happened yet. However, it wouldn't take long before that changed. During the first attempt, Elatrion summons Ice blocks into the arena. When they appear, a sound is produced, but locating them blindfolded is next to impossible, given that you don't know their location. Yet somehow, she knows to strafe her character around the ice when making a line for the boss. With no audio cues, it shouldn't be possible to strafe an ice block, but what's more impressive is that not only did she rotate the camera perfectly, she runs straight towards the dragon's head. This is significant because she's using the Greatsword, a weapon that has charge attacks and combos that deal more damage damage when you hit the head, so any unexplained head targeting would be a huge red flag. One of Elatrion's ice attacks has him hover in the air and breathe ice directly down. The audio cue for this is consistent, and he lands his head exactly where the ice attack happens, so a blindfolded strat would be to aim for the audio source in this case. She successfully pulls this off twice but the second attempt is worth looking at. This time, the dragon is close to the wall, so when it lands on the ground, the wall pushes it forward from where you'd expect it to be based on the audio cue, with there being no sound telling the player that it's been pushed. Despite this, Queen makes a micro-adjustment for where the dragon's head landed instead of where the audio cue indicated it would be. Another instance of this happens when the boss charges a lightning attack, Anytime it uses lightning, you'll hear a crackling sound that comes from its horns, but you won't know exactly what attack it's using until the attack starts and you get another audio cue. If you're not blindfolded, you can tell right away what attack the boss is going to use based on its animation, and in this case, we see that after hearing the crackle, she starts a slinger burst before hearing the dragon's roar. The Slinger Burst lets you quickly combo into a powerful charge strike and is a punish for this specific attack. Since she had only heard the lightning crackle at this point and not the dragon's roar, there wasn't any indication that this combo should be used unless you could see the screen in which case the dragon's animation indicates this punish is correct. Playing games at a top level can be tough, but one thing that shouldn't be tough is achieving your own personal development goals, and that's where today's sponsor, BetterHelp, comes in. If you have a goal in your personal life or want to overcome feelings you may be dealing with but have been hesitant about therapy, BetterHelp makes it easier for you by offering therapy sessions over phone calls, video chats, and messaging. With over 30,000 therapists in their network, it's easy to get matched with one based on your needs and preferences 
challenges if you use my link. Getting started is easy as you fill out a questionnaire related to what challenges you're dealing with and what kind of therapist you prefer to help you, with BetterHelp matching you with a therapist within 48 hours in most cases. Sessions can be scheduled at your convenience, and if you don't think your therapist is a good fit, you can switch with a click of a button at no additional cost, removing any awkward conversations that switching therapists can normally bring. Get 10% off your first month of BetterHelp using my link in the description and join over 4 million people who have met with a therapist through BetterHelp. And with that, let's get back to the blindfolded run. One inconsistency pointed out by a Monster Hunter speedrunner is how she dodges the 5 wave lightning attack. In this instance, you can see that she waits for 3 lightning strikes then perfectly dodges the 4th, but in the next attack, she starts dodging wildly then gets hit by it. This could be explained by the 3D audio in the game since you would know the first strike is far away given its loudness, but it does make you wonder why the dodging strategy changed for the next wave attack. Another example is this dodge she performs against a horn attack as the dodge is started before the audio cue has began to play. Here it is slowed down, and the only clue that this attack is coming before the audio plays is the dragon's animation. To know where the head is when blindfolded is a difficult task as while a lot of Elytrion's audio cues do emanate from his head, not all of them do, and being able to locate the head based on audio cues from its general direction isn't something that should be observed consistently throughout a blindfolded run. For instance, here you can see Elytrion has been wall banged and she's set up to hit him. In fact, she does hit him, but on the follow-up strike, her character rotates to the left so that it will target the head for extra damage. There's no audio cue that indicates she should make this micro-adjustment, and it's just one of many that occur. In this case, her spotter calls out a clagger and she turns her camera to center the boss on the screen. This could be attributed to audio cues, but after centering the boss, she makes a micro-adjustment to the head and makes a beeline for it, and somehow knew exactly how much distance to run before executing the attack. While locating the general direction of the boss is possible with audio cues, gauging the precise distance is a lot harder. In fact, it's why blindfolded speedrunners use standardized movement to help them complete games. Bubsia is an accomplished blindfolded runner with multiple achievements under his belt, including the first 120 star blindfolded run of Mario 64, but he's also beaten games such as Dark Souls while blindfolded. You might notice that in both games he touches the camera as little as possible. This is because the slightest movement in the camera's position will nullify any movement pattern he's created, which is why developing scripted movement patterns without using camera controls is so important. Sometimes horizontal movement with the camera is required, but one thing blindfolded runners try to avoid at all costs is vertical movement, with Bubsia even unplugging his mouse and using a notched controller for Dark Souls as the slightest bit of unintended camera movement would be impossible to recover from. Let's try it together. Put your cursor in the middle of this yellow circle, then close your eyes. Now move your mouse up a few inches, then move it back down. Open your eyes and see if it's in the circle. Now try this 100 times and let me know how you did, and I bet you'll find that realigning vertical movement while blindfolded is impossible. I asked an accomplished Monster Hunter player to try and fight a boss blindfolded using camera controls, and the result was what you'd expect. As soon as they touched the camera in the vertical, they immediately got lost and couldn't recover. In Queen's Run, we see that not only is the camera moving a lot, but she also makes vertical adjustments constantly. There are several instances where the camera gets adjusted in the vertical while she tracks the dragon. It's one thing to find its general location, but having it constantly centered on screen using vertical movement shouldn't be possible. Looking at other blindfolded runs of Monster Hunter, we see that lock-on is the primary method of targeting, as it eliminates the need to track a boss with camera movements. But Queen never uses lock-on, and only uses mouse-controlled camera movements in her run. Tracking the boss with camera movements was highly suspicious, but it wasn't the only thing that was found. Before one of her attempts, she says this, Could you imagine if you disconnected in the middle of the hunt and I'd be forced to still do solo? Not long after, that's precisely what happens, she disconnects, and within two solo attempts, she kills Elytrion while blindfolded. Queen's video would be posted to Asmongold's subreddit and her Discord made sure it got enough upvotes for him to watch it. Juzi's analysis video was posted on the sub the next day, and after watching it, Asmongold said that if she could do the run again, it would clear up everything, and that's precisely what she did. 
After speaking with a runner for what extra proof measures should be included, she uploaded a video announcing she would do another run, but this time she would have a community-approved blindfold, covers over her screen, an input display, and a hand cam in addition to her regular cam. Faking a blindfolded run under these circumstances should be difficult, so how does it stand up to analysis? One of the first things she does is a proof check on the blindfold and shines a flashlight through it to show that no light is getting through. She even does this with the blindfold she used previously to prove that the first run was also legitimate. Something about this blindfold check smelled fishy to me, so let's go back and analyze the blindfold in the first run. You can see that as she's putting it on, there appears to be light from the background shining through, and if this doesn't convince you, let's look at another instance. You can clearly see that the blindfold is transparent, as not only can you see light coming through it, but also her hair on the other side of it, which brings us back to the blindfold test in the second stream. Here's a comparison of the blindfold thickness from both runs. In the first run, it was so large that it hung over her mouth, so she refolded the extra bit so it would sit on her nose, but not in front of her eyes. In the proof test, it's clear that the blindfold has been folded to be thicker so that light won't pass through it, and you can try this experiment for yourself. Take a shirt or other piece of material that's transparent and shine a light through it. Fold the material and repeat the test, and what you'll see as it gets thicker is less light shining through until it's blocked entirely. I wasn't content with how she performed the test, so I proof called her, and here was her response. I, d I did do it. Do I need to do it again? This didn't sit well with me, so I asked again and explained why an unfolded check was important, as it would prove if the material was transparent or not, and here was her reply. The material, it does not have transparency. Eventually, I was timed out for asking for a legitimate check of the blindfold's transparency, and it's safe to say why the unfolded light check wasn't performed, as it would have revealed the transparency we already knew about, which explains all of the head tracking and movement decisions. But what about the second run? You'd think with all of the extra proof requirements that the second run couldn't possibly be cheated. However, these requirements only make it more difficult to cheat, not impossible. And this run is even more suspect than the original. There are multiple instances where the dragon's head is tracked perfectly with vertical movement, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. We'll dive into this in my next video on February 29th, because there's so much wrong with it that it will take an entire video just to unpack. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next exciting episode of Abyssoft Z.